If you were a kid and drug dealers suddenly broke into your home to kidnap you, what would you do? These ex-military gangsters are pure evil, but when they piss off this blind soldier, they're going to instantly regret it. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat Don't Breathe 2. This girl is about to have the worst night of her life. Phoenix here is hiding in the woods, and she's absolutely terrified of getting killed. Sneaking through the ruins of an old building, she finds a small clearing when suddenly a massive Rottweiler starts chasing her. Running as fast as she can, the girl reaches a chained fence and manages to climb up just in time to escape. On the other side, she finds an abandoned car, but notices a backpack with a revolver inside. Taking it out, the girl backs away, but suddenly an old man appears behind her. He grabs her, snatching the gun away, but then he lets her go. This blind man is Phoenix's dad who has been training her for survival and she's just failed her test. This is the same blind war veteran from the first movie where we found out that his first daughter was killed in a hit and run. Hungry for revenge? The man kidnapped the driver and tried to artificially inseminate her, but the woman died before she could produce a new daughter for him. This girl has no idea who her father really is and it's even worse than you think. They head back home where the girl gives her father a haircut, and she starts to ask about her mother. She wants to know if she got the white streak in her hair from her mom or dad, and the man confirms her mother had one too. She's never seen her mom because all of their photos were destroyed in a house fire, but she gets the feeling that her father is not telling her the truth. Okay, don't let this dude fool you with his new haircut and dad bod, because this guy is a total psycho. We don't exactly know where this girl came from, but if it had anything to do with this make a new daughter revenge plot from the first movie, then this guy has a lot of explaining to do. Now, we have to give the man some credit, because he's already trying to teach her survival skills, which is great parenting. But there's one very critical flaw in this guy's private boot camp. Running from dogs and climbing fences are one thing, but making smart decisions that don't get you killed are something else entirely. If I were him, the first thing I would be teaching her is how to fire a gun and disarm someone in an attack. Look at where they live here, because this town is an absolute hole on the outskirts of Detroit. Last year alone, the city's murder rate went up 19%, and shootings went up a full 53%. Those numbers are staggering, and since they're right at the edge of one of the most dangerous cities in the country, this is a much better thing to train her for instead of the silly dog chase. I also would have been studying the psychologist Laszlo Polgar, who raised his daughters to become the most famous female chess prodigies the world has ever seen. He used their entire childhood to prove that if you took the right approach, you could turn any healthy newborn into a genius, and he did this three times in a row. Now, chess doesn't provide any direct survival skills, but critical thinking and predicting someone's decisions are definitely a plus when your life is in danger, and that kind of lateral thinking can be applied to this girl's education as well. There are a lot of things a war veteran could teach you about reading other people's behavior to anticipate a threat, and it would have been much more useful knowledge to a girl this age. She could also use those skills to play strategy games online, because sometimes it's important to just enjoy yourself without being judged. Like with today's sponsor, MPL Mobile Premier League. MPL Mobile Premier League is an amazing play with money gaming app that lets you actually win real cash. It has all your favorite games in one place so you can decide what you're in the mood for. If you're extra competitive, you'll love playing head-to-head -head directly against other players or in one of their multiplayer tournaments. Choose any game to play and receive cash rewards if you win. If you love basketball like me, there's nothing like the feeling of watching the ball sink into the hoop every time you shoot. Hoops is a basketball game where you and your opponent shoot hoops on the same court and compete for a higher score. Being able to play it all day and win money at the same time is awesome. I found that precision and patience were the most important elements in order to win, and users get matched against other players based on their skill level, so you can still win even if you're getting started. MPL ensures that users' gameplays and payments are protected, all the cash won by use for keeps, and can be easily withdrawn to PayPal or bank account in a very reliable and smooth process. Download now from the link in the description and get a $5 bonus when you sign up. You can even get up to a $20 bonus reward for each friend you invite to join the app. The MPL app is available for free on both the iOS App Store and for Android on the MPL website, and it's just a great app to play, compete, enjoy your favorite games, and earn money while having fun. Share this app with your friends? Must be 18 or older to play. Later that day, this woman Hernandez comes to pick up some plants and asks the blind man if his daughter will join her today, but he refuses to let her out. The woman warns him that if he doesn't give his daughter freedom, she's going to rebel, and the man knows she's right. Going back inside, he tells his daughter she can go into town, but they have no idea this trip will get someone killed. 
the woman takes the girl out while she makes deliveries around town, and they stop at a convenience store before heading back home. Inside the restroom, Phoenix hears washing her hands, but looks up to see this man staring at her. He introduces himself as Raylan, and the girl is creeped out. But when she tries to leave, he blocks the exit. Lucky for her, the dog comes to her rescue, startling the man, and he backs away to let her through. But as she walks past him, he runs his finger through her hair, letting her know he'll be seeing her again very soon. Back in the van, she tells Hernandez about the creep in the restroom, but the two have no idea they're about to lead this man straight to the girl's home. After dropping Phoenix off, the woman is driving back into town when she finds the road is blocked by a truck. She honks the horn, but there's no response, and decides to get out of her van to find out what's going on. Approaching the vehicle, she asks the driver to move out of the way, only to find it's the same creep she saw earlier at the convenience store. Flashing her gun, she tells him to move off the road, and he says he will, but the man is acting suspicious as hell. Getting back into her van, she stows her gun in the glove box, but this was her biggest mistake. The woman is about to call the cops when a man suddenly appears behind her and strangles her with a belt. She tries to break free, but the man takes out a hammer and brutally beats her to death. Okay, let's first look at what this woman did right. When she approached the car, she took her gun with her because she knew this was a potential threat. She also wrote down the license plate and was about to call 911, but she ignored the most important signs that this was clearly an ambush and it got her killed. The first thing to notice is that the car's lights are on and we can hear the motor running, which means that there's no engine failure. They're also parked next to a large obstruction here, which would be the best place to stop if you wanted to intentionally block the road. She should have realized that these observations add up to clear and present danger. And since this woman is a military veteran who is trained to spot potential threats, she definitely should have seen this coming. Now, we can't blame her for not realizing there was someone in her van, because when she looked inside the truck, it seemed to be full. There's no reason to think that there might be a fifth criminal, but she allowed herself to get complacent and put her gun back in the glove box, which was a terrible decision. Lastly, even though she was being strangled to death, she still had a way to survive the situation. A veteran like her should know that when someone attacks you while you're in the driver's seat, the first thing you want to do is sink into your chair and put your hands up to protect your head. This is a common defense tactic for Uber and taxi drivers who are being threatened. But instead, you can see that this woman has absolutely no reflex here. Now despite this, she still has control over the situation because her foot is already on the accelerator. If I was being strangled like this, I would have floored it to crash the van and send this guy into the front, setting me free from his stranglehold. It's risky, but the choices here are either a guaranteed death by hammer or a potential death by car crash. And for me, the choice is obvious. At the house, the blind man goes outside to feed his dog, but when he bends down to fill the bowl, he notices that the dog still hasn't eaten. Something's wrong, and he goes back inside to grab his coat, never sensing the thugs standing in his kitchen. Their guns are drawn, but the men quickly realize that this old man is blind as a bat and wait for him to leave. The man goes back outside to search for his dog and finds him dead on the ground. He pulls out a bullet that was lodged inside, and the man realizes someone shot his dog. Upstairs, Phoenix notices the lights have been turned on and immediately realizes that a stranger is inside of her house. She crawls under her bed right before a man enters the room. Suddenly, he lifts up her mattress, but the girl has already disappeared. The burglar never notices her hiding under her wardrobe, and that's when the girl has a brilliant idea. She throws her watch into the bathroom, and the beeping alarm distracts the man to help her crawl away unnoticed. Making it all the way downstairs, she sees that the back door has been left open and quietly sneaks her way over. But just as she reaches it, a bullet goes flying into the wall. Slowly turning around, the girl finds a thug pointing his gun straight at her, and Phoenix here has just lost her best chance at escaping. Okay, this girl got caught, but if you were paying attention to the details, you would have realized that Phoenix here has a very high IQ. First of all, she immediately realized that there was a stranger in the house because her dad is blind and doesn't need to turn on the lights. It might seem obvious, but processing that information to reach the conclusion that your house is being invaded is incredibly fast thinking from someone her age, and she acted on it without hesitation. Then, when the man lifted the mattress, she had already moved to a different and less obvious hiding spot, so she's already one step ahead of this guy and predicting his decisions. Now, even though she found another place to hide, it doesn't mean that the girl is safe. She knew that the longer she stays in the room, the more likely it is that this man will find her, and that means we can't just wait for him to leave. 
This is why turning her watch into a time distraction was absolutely brilliant, because it means that she had already considered all these outcomes and figured out that this was her best strategy. Instead of being complacent and getting caught, she thought ahead and it got her all the way to the back door. This is exactly how you should be thinking when there's a threat like this, and if her dad wasn't a control freak, she would have had a phone like a normal 13 year old girl and could have called 911. The burglar steps in front of the door to block her exit. Suddenly, the blind man reaches through the glass and grabs him before snapping the gun out of his hand. The thug swings his hammer into the blind man's shoulder, but he doesn't release his grip. Frightened, the girl runs into the basement and tries to close the door, but another burglar slams it open and knocks her down the staircase. He follows the girl into the basement, but she manages to reach this huge steel box and locks herself inside before he can stop her. Meanwhile, the blind man has escaped to the garage where he tries to superglue his wound closed, but one of the burglars has followed his trail. Noticing a bloodstain on the door handle, he pulls it open and walks inside, turning on the light to look around the room. Seeing a figure on the bed of the truck, he pulls the dust cover off, but nobody is there. Suddenly, the veteran comes out of hiding and attacks him, but the burglar fires his gun, alerting his friend nearby. The man comes to the garage to investigate the noise, only to find his friend crawling towards him on the ground. His mouth and nose have been super glued shut, and he's suffocating to death. Acting fast, he grabs a screwdriver and stabs a hole in the man's cheek to let him breathe. He can't understand what kind of psycho would do this, but when he turns around, he finds the answer to his question. In front of him is a plaque with the pin of a Navy SEAL, and as this guy here cuts his mouth back open, they both instantly regret stepping foot into his house. Okay, as cool as it is to superglue somebody's mouth and nose shut, it's also pretty stupid. If you consider what it takes to actually make this happen, it means that the blind veteran had to hold the man down, then squeeze out a bunch of epoxy and keep him there while he waits for it to dry. Practically speaking, it would have made a lot more sense to just shoot the guy in the face and walk away. Since the criminal had already fired his gun, the man knew someone would come to investigate, so taking your time to superglue this guy's mouth shut is pretty short-sighted. The better strategy would be to lure out members of the group one by one and ambush them, because this blind man will easily get killed if he's facing the whole group at once. A trail of blood is a great trick to draw them in. Then, by alerting others with gunshots, we can bait more of them to investigate and kill them off one by one. If the veteran had executed this plan more effectively, then both of these men would already be dead. Now, even though he let both these idiots survive, this doesn't take away from the fact that this veteran is really dangerous. This pin here is the special warfare insignia that you get when you become a Navy SEAL, but what they didn't notice were the three other medals below it. This one is a commendation medal, which is awarded when a soldier has significantly impacted a military operation. This one is a Marine Corps Expeditionary Medal, which you can earn for completing a mission that was top secret. Since the veteran is roughly 70 years old, that most likely means he was given these awards during the Vietnam war. This is not the kind of man that you want to mess with. Inside the house, this thug is filling the steel box full of water and the girl is going to drown if she doesn't open the door. Getting impatient, the burglar takes his light off the wall, rips out the live wire, and pushes the sparking cable into the box, threatening to electrocute her. Suddenly, a canister comes rolling out of the darkness and fills the air with gas. The thug pulls out his gun, but realizes he'll blow himself up if he shoots and puts his pistol away as the veteran steps out into the light. The burglar tries to quietly approach him, but steps on a metal drain, alerting the blind man who starts swinging a piece of rebar, and they get into a brutal fight. But the veteran accidentally bumps into the water valve, turning the hose back on. The girl realizes she'll die if she doesn't escape, and dives under the water to try and unlock the door. The burglar gets the upper hand and throws the veteran to the ground before he goes to pick up his knife. But this blind man has one last trick up his sleeve. Yanking on the power cable, he snaps the wire out of the water-filled box and pulls a table down in front of him before throwing the cord over the side. The cable sparks and sets the gas off, causing a massive explosion that shakes the foundations of the house. The thugs have just lost one of their men, but that's when they notice that reinforcements have arrived. Outside, a pickup truck rolls up to the driveway and they see that their leader has come. Downstairs, the veteran uses every ounce of strength he has to tip the box onto its side. The girl comes rolling out, coughing up a mouthful of water, and the man is relieved that she's still alive. He carries his daughter to the other side of the basement, and together they hurry down an escape tunnel. But the vet doesn't realize that the thugs have him cornered. Okay, this was really quick thinking. This blind vet knew that there was a disadvantage here that he could neutralize, and he managed to do it with one single trick. By filling the room with a flammable gas, he removed the thug's ability to fire his gun, forcing him into a fistfight, which is the only way that the vet could ever get out of this situation alive. It was really clever thinking, but I honestly can't get past one detail here. 
This war veteran is all about teaching this girl how to survive, but for some strange reason, the best safety features he has in the house are a 10 year old Rottweiler and a giant steel box in the basement. Look at this thing. It's a total death trap, and even though it did technically save her life, it also didn't take very much for this thug to quickly figure out how to exploit its weaknesses. Now you might think this man can't afford a better security system, but when you realize that an average veteran's pension is still over $55,000 per year, the man should definitely be able to afford something better than a steel box. This dog is a security measure too, but owning a dog can cost as much as $20,000 over the course of their lifetime, and a proper home security system only costs $2,000. If you actually do the math here, this man is full of crap because he preaches survival to keep the girl safe, but won't even spend 1 25th of his annual salary for a safety feature that will last 20 years. If the man followed his own advice, poor little Shadow here wouldn't have gotten killed, and the alarm system would have been triggered before the burglars ever stepped foot inside the house. The veteran locks the trapdoor behind him and they're about to leave when suddenly a gunshot blasts through the hatch. They have no choice but to hide as the burglars cornered them into the greenhouse. Raylan here climbs through the trapdoor as the thugs help him search for Phoenix and the leader calls out to the girl. He warns that her father isn't who she thinks he is and is about to share the man's secret when the veteran lunges out to attack him. The burglar fights him off and knocks the father out but just before Raylan is about to shoot him, the girl pushes his gun away and saves her dad's life. The leader reassures Phoenix here that she's safe and takes his beanie off. This man has a white streak in his hair just like she does and she realizes he's her real father. He tells her that years ago their family was separated in a house fire and the blind man must have kidnapped her to raise the girl as his own. She's at a loss for words and her father Raylan tells her that the veteran has to die for what he's done. This thug starts to take him outside for execution when suddenly the old man slams his head into the guy's nose and manages to escape. The burglar starts shooting wildly, but the veteran has already disappeared. Okay, now we finally know the truth. This blind man kidnapped the girl and raised her as his daughter, which is pretty messed up. But he could have at least been a little bit smarter about it. Eight years ago, he found her passed out in the middle of the road and took her home, knowing that her parents lived in the same town only a couple of miles away, and that's one of the dumbest things you could possibly do. Earlier in the movie, we can see that Hernandez takes her to her childhood home so she can leave flowers for her dead mother, and it's the only reason her biological father found her in the first place. It's actually not that different from a real kidnapping case that happened in 2002. A girl named Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped by an insane homeless man for 9 months, and she was later found living only 18 miles away from her family home. The veteran should have realized that someone was going to figure this out, and the fact that he didn't even move to a different town to hide her identity makes the whole thing seem really stupid. As far as escaping the burglars, hiding in the greenhouse might be the worst thing to do, because the glass makes it easy to see if someone is moving inside. The only other exit is to break a window, which is just going to attract more attention from the noise. I would have stayed in the basement, because it keeps us in the dark, and since this man is blind, it levels the playing field. They can't see him, and he can't see them. He can also put the girl back in that silly steel box of his and cut the hose so that they won't be able to drown her again. The burglars would have no choice but to go downstairs and look for him, which might give him a better chance of luring them into isolation one by one until there's nobody left. The leader orders the men to take his daughter to the truck while he heads outside to hunt down the vet. This blonde thug carries the girl through the greenhouse, but Phoenix picks up a pitchfork and stabs it straight into the man's foot. Furious, he knocks her to the ground before ripping the pitchfork back out. Walking over, the man threatens to kill her when suddenly the veteran appears, jamming a trowel straight into his neck. Picking up a spade, he bashes the man's face in and it's clear this veteran is not messing around. The blind man pulls his daughter into the house and reaches around to find a hidden revolver taped to the bottom of his dinner table. Upstairs, he pulls down the attic ladder, but that's when they hear a dog running up to them and the girl ditches her father, escaping into another room. The man climbs up the ladder as fast as he can, but this animal will not stop and chases him into the attic. Thinking quickly, the man uses a mattress frame as a shield to block the angry dog, and the veteran has the opportunity to kill it, but can't bring himself to pull the trigger. He may be a kidnapper who artificially inseminates people, but killing a dog is a line he just won't cross. Meanwhile, the girl has escaped, sliding down a drain pipe to reach the ground. She walks away into the woods, leaving her father behind, but suddenly she's grabbed by a thug and screams for help just before he knocks her out. Raylan orders the thug to put his daughter in the truck and realizes this is the best chance to get his revenge. He opens up a cooler full of Molotov cocktails, lights one up, and throws it straight into the house. The building goes up in flames and the burglars drive away, leaving the blind man and their dog to be burned alive. Okay. These guys aren't just stupid thugs, because they carried this mission out with strategy and adapted to the situation. 
Earlier when Hernandez found them on the road, Raylan here told her that they were all dishonorably discharged military vets, so they're much more experienced than your average burglar. Having said that, these guys have one crucial weakness they've left completely uncovered, and that is their truck. This was a huge oversight because they have only one exit strategy, and if it fails, their whole plan goes with it. If I were this blind vet, instead of running throughout the house playing hide and seek, I would have had the girl lead me to their truck and sabotage it by slashing their tires. Then, we might be able to cut their electrical cables so that they wouldn't be able to engage the engine. This is the best guarantee that they can't just take the girl and leave. It was pretty clear what they were here for from the very beginning, because you don't need five men to invade the home of a blind man and kill him. You only have a crew this deep if you want to take something, and if you already had the information we needed to deduce that, then sabotaging their car would have been the best early strategy to stop them from getting what they want. There's no neighborhood watch around here, but if you have five hardened criminals running through the streets with a 13-year-old girl in their arms, someone is bound to notice and call the cops. Without a car, the whole plan becomes extremely difficult to pull off, and this makes it an absolute necessity that they come find and kill you before leaving with the girl. The veteran realizes they've taken his daughter and lets the dog free so they can escape the fire. He tries to follow it down the stairs, but the flames shoot out from the ground floor, pushing him back. With nowhere left to turn, he leaps out the window and falls straight through the glass and onto the ground. He was lucky to get out alive, but the only thing on his mind now is rescuing his daughter. Later that night, the girl wakes up on a bed with no idea where she is and is greeted by her real father, Raylan. She notices that the door has been left open and her father says she's allowed to go. It's suspicious, but with her newfound freedom, she decides to take her leave and the man doesn't stop her. She's about to exit the building when she hears a woman singing a lullaby that she recognizes, and when she turns around, she realizes that this woman is her biological mother. The woman reveals that her heart was severely damaged after inhaling toxic fumes, and that she's going to die soon. The girl is offered a drink, and she takes a sip as her mother explains that the only way she can survive is if she gets a heart transplant from a direct relative. That's when the girl realizes that the orange juice she drank was laced with a sedative, and her parents brought her here just so they could cut out her heart. This was a setup, and she collapses on the couch unconscious. Okay, it should really go without saying, but don't accept drinks from strangers, especially if they're claiming to be your parents. They bought her trust by letting her think that she had the freedom to leave them and walk outside, and that was all that this girl needed to let her guard down. Now, while it's understandable, it's also very stupid because they've already drugged you once with chloroform and nearly executed this man in front of you, so there's no reason to trust a word they are saying, no matter how old you are. If you look here, you can clearly see three rooms with medical equipment and operating tables, so this is not the kind of environment where you want to be trusting others. Now, we can't ignore that there are some important crossovers between their story and the blind man's version of what happened, and this will go a long way in figuring out the truth for ourselves. Both stories involve a fire, but Raylan here says that he was sentenced 8 years in jail for it. This is suspicious, because there's no reason you should go to jail for your house burning down unless you were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing. The woman also said that they had a kitchen in the basement, and with those two details, it's crystal clear that these two were running a meth lab. That's what put this guy in jail, and that's also why this woman is deathly ill, because homemade meth labs cause toxic fumes and explosions. Phoenix here doesn't have enough exposure to the outside world to understand this, and that's a real tragedy because figuring this out could have helped the girl escape. If you know anything about meth heads, you know that they're paranoid about everything. This could be the best tool we have to find a way to escape because it lets them manipulate their fears so that they make a mistake. I would have asked them if the police car outside belonged to them or not. A stupid lie like this said casually to a pair of meth addicts would make them go ballistic, and Raylan here would run to the front door to see for himself. Since the woman is in a wheelchair, we could use that moment to grab a scalpel from one of these operating rooms and run away to look for another exit. It's not a foolproof plan by any means, but it's a hell of a lot better than letting yourself get drugged and knocked unconscious. At the house, the blind man and the dog have both managed to survive the fire, but that's when he hears something jingling in the distance. Following the noise, he finds his friend Hernandez's crashed van with her corpse left in the driver's seat. He's lost everyone he's cared for, but when he hears the dog whining, the man comes up with a genius plan to get revenge. He checks the back of the van before packing a bag full of weapons, and then leashes the dog to let it lead him to the burglar's hideout. Meanwhile, the girl wakes up on a gurney and discovers she's been cuffed to the table as a doctor repairs for the operation. The man warns her parents that she has to be alive during the surgery, or else the heart won't be fresh enough for the transplant to work. He'll need to cut it out of the girl while she's breathing, and Phoenix here is terrified. The doctor begins the surgery and is about to saw into her chest when the power suddenly goes out. 
This thug goes to check out the breaker box, but when he reaches it, he discovers that someone has turned it off. Lifting the lever back up, the blind man appears from behind and suddenly attacks him. The veteran hacks at the breaker box, plunging the building into darkness. The burglar bashes the veteran's leg in, sending him to the floor. But just as he's about to deliver the finishing blow, the man disarms him and shoves a bell straight down his throat. With the man choking to death, he picks up the hammer and throws it straight at the thug's head, killing him instantly. Okay, he may be a badass Navy SEAL, but the fact that this blind man was able to find the power switch without even knowing the layout of the building is completely ridiculous. So I'm calling bullsh** here. Now, it was extremely lucky that he stopped the heart transplant just in time, because this was going to be an absolute disaster. An operation like this is incredibly complicated and requires teams of doctors to make sure every precaution is taken to be successful. There are so many things that can go wrong here and having one grimy surgeon to do this all alone is just stupid. First of all, a heart can stay alive outside the body for at least 4 hours, but transplant surgeries often take far longer to operate and that's in a normal hospital. With gangsters breathing down the surgeon's neck, he is not set up to succeed here and is probably about to get both of these girls killed. Secondly, the size of the organ is also a very important factor because it needs to fit the patient's body. This is why children's organs are normally given to other children and not adults, because the heart might be too small. Now, only 15% of people who get new hearts die after one year, but this woman is obviously a meth addict and has a pre-existing condition from smoke inhalation, which isn't even the same organ. These can lead to complications that make this transplant more risk than it's worth, and if these kids had realized this, they might have decided to go out like Bonnie and Clyde instead of on an operating table. Without power, Raven tells the doctor to pack up so he can perform the transplant somewhere else. The mother is wheeled through the halls as the group tries to make their escape. As Raylan pushes his wife down another hall, he hears the doctor get murdered and that means the veteran is closing in. In the pitch black darkness, the father blasts away at the boarded up windows and lets the sunlight shine through. He walks alongside this empty swimming pool and finds the doctor's corpse leaning against a wall, but then notices cans of pesticide left behind that start to fill the room with toxic gas. The veteran ambushes him, slicing at the man with his machete as the father fights him off. Knocked to the ground, Raylan picks up his gun and starts shooting blindly into the room, but when the fog clears, he sees his wife with a bolt hole in her stomach. He accidentally shot her and is horrified by what he's done. Suddenly, the blind man attacks Raylan, but he manages to disarm him and the two men get into a brutal fight. They never notice the mother collapse into her controller and drive the wheelchair towards the pool, dragging the girl by her handcuff. Desperately, she holds herself to this pole as her mother's corpse weighs her down, but then she notices the machete laying on the ground and comes up with a clever idea. Taking it, she hacks at her mother's wrist and cuts the woman's arm off until the body plummets down into the pool. The blind man gets slashed across the stomach, but he's saved when the dog comes running in and bites the man's wrist. Raylan flings the animal through a window and moves a piece of furniture in front of the hole, but when he turns around, the veteran grabs his head and gouges his eyes out, blinding him permanently. That's when the blind man hears the girl walking towards him and tells her to stay away. The man confesses that everything her biological father said was true and breaks down in tears. But suddenly, he's stabbed through the back. Raylan is still alive and is about to slit the veteran's throat when he gets killed by none other than his own daughter. The girl holds the blind veteran as he starts to bleed out, and the man is too weak to continue. In a single night, this little girl has lost all the family she has ever known and is now completely alone. She leaves the building having learned a valuable lesson. Sometimes killing people is the only way to solve your problems, and that karma is a real bitch. But what do you think? How would you be Don't Breathe too? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Beat playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.